Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to all new viewers. My name is Olka and I'm a UK-based vet and today I'd like to talk to you about the core vaccinations given to dogs in the UK. Before I get to it, please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell if you enjoy my content. This allows me to keep this channel going. I aim to release a video every week. I also have an Instagram account where I post daily, so go and check it out. Without further delay, let's dive into the topic of this week's video then. Vaccination appointments or booster appointments are one of the most common reasons owners and their pets come to a veterinary practice. Typically, during these appointments, your dog will be given a routine physical examination and an injection. Maybe 15% of clients would ask me what we actually vaccinate against, and when I list the diseases, they seem to be as clueless as before they asked, to be honest. The reason for that is simple. The names of the diseases sound foreign and not straightforward at all. And who can blame them? After all, dog owners, or at least the majority of them, didn't go to vet school or don't hold a big interest in veterinary medicine and infectious diseases. To explain what every disease is properly would take more time than your average vaccination appointment lasts. That's why I decided to make this video and tell you in more detail what the diseases we vaccinate against actually are. The 2015 WSAVA vaccination guidelines define core vaccines as those which protect animals from severe, life-threatening diseases that have global distribution and which all dogs and cats, regardless of circumstances or geographical location, should receive. WSAVA stress that their guidelines do not serve as a set of globally applicable rules, but are intended to be used by national associations and individual veterinary practices to develop vaccination schedules relevant to the local situation. BSAVA recommends that, in the UK, consideration be given to vaccinating companion animals against the following diseases depending on their individual circumstances and specific risk assessment. Core vaccines should be considered for all animals. Non-core vaccines will need to be considered in specific circumstances. I would also like to add the diseases and core vaccinations I will be covering in this video are considered core vaccinations at the time of the recording of this video and might change in the future. Currently, in the UK, there are four vaccinations that we consider core. These are against canine distemper, canine parvovirus, infectious canine hepatitis, and canine leptospirosis. These vaccines should be boosted as required to maintain an adequate level of immunity against these diseases at all times. However, remember that no vaccine provides 100% protection. Current general guidelines say to vaccinate adult dogs once a year against leptospirosis and every three years against parvovirus, distemper and hepatitis. I talked about puppy vaccinations in one of my previous videos, so if you want more information about this, check it out. This might change on a case-by-case -case basis based on individual factors. Okay, so let's talk about these four nasty diseases. Let's start with leptospirosis. Leptospirosis, also known as lepto, is a disease caused by infection with leptospira bacteria. These bacteria can be found in soil and water. Leptospirosis is a zoonotic disease, which means it can be spread from animals to people. Exposure to water outdoors, wetlands, and public open spaces were identified as risk factors. Clinical cases are most commonly diagnosed in the summer and early autumn, and the numbers of cases often increase in years with heavy rainfall. Leptospirosis is spread by infected dogs, mice, rats, and cows. Your dog is at a higher risk of catching leptospirosis if they kill rodents on a regular basis or spend a lot of time swimming. Leptospira are passed in urine and enter the body through damaged skin or intact mucous membranes. For example, through bite wounds, mating, or ingestion of contaminated water. It can also be transmitted in the uterus to unborn puppies. Infection can lead to kidney or liver failure, or both. 
Signs of leptospirosis may include fever, shivering, sore muscles, lethargy, increased thirst, changes in the frequency or amount of urination, dehydration, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite, jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin and mucous membranes, or inflammation of the eyes. So many sim possible symptoms. Dogs may sometimes develop severe lung disease and have difficulties breathing. Leptospirosis can cause bleeding disorders, which can lead to blood tinge, the vomit, urine, stool, or saliva. Affected dogs can also develop swellings and accumulate excess fluid in certain parts of their body. Fluid therapy is required for most dogs as well as antibiotics. The feces and urine of infected dogs should be handled wearing gloves. Contaminated surfaces should be cleaned with detergents and disinfected. That disease just sounds awful, doesn't it? Next on our radar is distemper. Canine distemper is a contagious and serious disease caused by a virus that attacks the respiratory, gastrointestinal and nervous systems. Dogs become infected through airborne exposure to the virus, like sneezing or coughing. The virus can also be transmitted by bowls and equipment. Infected dogs can shed the virus for months, and pregnant dogs can pass the virus through the placenta to their unborn puppies. The disease is most common in puppies between 3 and 6 months of age. Owners generally present affected dogs for evaluation of depression, discharge from eyes and nose, cough, vomiting, diarrhea, or central nervous system signs. These central nervous system signs could include seizures, lack of coordination, or an unusual gait, which is an odd way of walking. Therapy for distemper is non-specific and supportive. Secondary bacterial infections of the gastrointestinal tract and the respiratory system are common and, if indicated, should be treated with appropriate antibiotics. Anticonvulsants are administered as needed to control seizures. The prognosis for dogs with central nervous system distemper is poor. It's impossible to predict whether a dog will survive distemper. Some dogs die during the early stages, some become so poorly that they need to be euthanized, some are left with permanent brain damage, and some are symptomatic for several weeks, but eventually improve. Now let's talk about parvovirus. Parvovirus is a highly infectious disease that can be fatal. Many dogs which are diagnosed with so-called parvo unfortunately die. The virus attacks cells in a dog's intestines and stops them from being able to absorb vital nutrients. The virus usually causes signs 5 to 12 days after the dog is infected. Parvovirus spreads through bodily fluids, including a dog's poop and vomit. Symptoms may include diarrhea, vomiting, intestinal bleeding, and lack of appetite. Damage to bone marrow may affect immunological responses, making the animal susceptible to serious bacterial infections. Treatment of parvo usually includes fluid and electrolyte therapy combined with antibiotics. Appropriate feeding is also very important. Sometimes this needs to happen via a special feeding tube. The dog should be kept away from other susceptible animals for at least two to four weeks after recovery. And the owner should be very careful when handling the dog's feces as not to contribute to spread of the virus. The virus itself persists in the environment for a long period of time, months even. Humans cannot get parvovirus from their dogs. However, they can pass parvo from one dog to another on their clothes, shoes or hands. Parvovirus is still common in the UK. Your puppy's chance of surviving parvovirus is much higher if you take them to the vet as soon as you notice concerning signs. Many dogs which receive veterinary treatment promptly survive parvo, but it's usually deadly without treatment. Sadly, because it's such an awful disease, some dogs die from it, even if they are treated quickly. What about infectious canine hepatitis? It is an acute liver condition caused by adenovirus. The virus is spread in feces, urine, 
blood, saliva, and nasal discharge of infected dogs. The virus attacks liver and kidneys. Symptoms include fever, depression, loss of appetite, vomiting, coughing, increased thirst, discharge from eyes and nose, and a painful abdomen. So many. Severe cases develop bleeding disorders. Corneal edema, which is a swelling within your dog's eye, so-called blue eye, occurs in the first week of illness and results from replication of virus within corneal cells. Rarely, neurological signs such as seizures, lack of coordination, circling, blindness, head pressing and eye twitching have been reported. The development of neurological signs may also result from developing hepatic encephalopathy, problems with liver, a thrombus within the brain or hemorrhage. Presentation varies greatly from a mild fever to death. Treatment is symptomatic and supportive. The goals of therapy are to limit secondary bacterial infections with aid of antibiotics, support appropriate hydration with fluid therapy, and control bleeding, which may happen. Sometimes blood transfusions are necessary. Humans can't catch this disease from dogs. Infectious canine hepatitis or canine viral hepatitis should be suspected in any dog less than one year of age that has a questionable vaccination history and signs of fever, respiratory, gastrointestinal and hepatic disease and certainly in any young dog that develops corneal edema or blue eye. To sum it up, all these diseases are dangerous and life-threatening. Even if we attempt to treat these infections, favorable prognosis isn't always guaranteed. Vaccination is the most effective way to prevent your dog getting infected. I hope I helped you understand these diseases a bit better and the next time you take your dog to a vet for a yearly booster, you will know why it is so important. And lastly, thank you for watching. I hope you liked my video. Please like, subscribe and I hope I'll see you here again soon. Bye!